What is the state of black marriage under integration? And are we losing the ability to bond with the opposite sex? And I would be remiss if I didn't just defer to Brother Jeannie on this one first. All right. I think they stepped into my lane on this one. So. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to be as succinct with this, but I, I, you know, of course, this is a lot what we deal with, and it's so important, so I'm going to try to really speak to everybody in this room. Uh, in a very uh, uh, direct way. When they first came to get us from Africa, they wanted our human resource. We were the best agriculturalists in the world. We were the best nation builders. We had the math and the science. We built their nation for them. That's what they wanted the first time. Second time, they wanted the resources that were in the ground. This is the most dangerous period in the history of the world for black people because they got machines. They don't need us to get the stuff out the ground. They want the land itself. They can move there. They have the cure to malaria, so they can live in that environment now. They don't need us to build anything for them because they've got the science and the math and the engineering in their books. So now the only thing is left is if we ever wake up and realize what they've done to us and decide that we're not going to allow this and rebuild ourselves, which means the end of their empire, the end of them. So that means that in order to prevent that, they need no more checks. They need a checkmate. So they've done everything imaginable under the sun. At least I hope they have. I don't come up with nothing new. <laughs> but to try to destroy us as a race of people. This is the first time on the chessboard, anyone that plays chess will understand what I'm talking about, where they have a potential checkmate. See, it's different when you, the things that they've done to us over the years, we've rebounded, but there's a reason. Because as long as you have a black woman, as long as the black woman is there, no matter, that's our ancient ancestral story, you can always rebuild a civilization, because no matter how much, We've been destroyed. She can breathe life into the children. She can turn a, a weak man into a strong man. Because when he fall in love with her, it ain't nothing that he won't do to make her happy. And if making her happy means building a nation and, or tearing another one down, he'll do whatever it takes to do it. So what they have understood is that they have calculated this properly. If they can get us to holistically give up the foundation of black family. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying, uh, you know, that they're getting us killing each other in the street. Yeah. But if a brother shoots a brother, he can turn his life around. How many of us have seen that happen? We have many members of the Nation of Islam, so we've seen that there's programs that can turn that around. Sisters have gone out, become prostitutes, or had the horrible things in life, but they've come back. But if in all of these situations, these are situations where, as African people, as black people, we can still put the mother and a father in a home, and if they commit to raising children, we can recover. Here's the difference. In this situation, you got a checkmate. It's over because if you can get the black man to concede to the idea that he don't even want a black woman at all, ever, and a black woman to concede to the fact that she doesn't want a black man, then the potential for a future of the race has already been wiped out. So the future is gone, but even deeper. So not only is the race destroyed, but it's something deeper. This is what makes this a checkmate. All we have to do is black people, and you've seen it throughout history. Once we see what's going on, we stand up, we fight. So they were lynching brothers and sisters in the South because they told us that we were rapists. And our people were so moral, well, if he was a rapist, we're not going to do nothing. And Sister Ida B. Wells Barnett took her pen and said, these brothers weren't rapists. They started a store and these white folks were uh, jealous of them. And then all the brothers started getting their pistols out and said, well, we, we, we thought they was killing criminals. But you tell them, they, no, we're not going to tolerate this. And the deacons of defense, we start standing up. In this situation, this is the danger. When you get a pedophile, who will molest children in our families and destroy these families. When you get the homosexuals going through, the European no longer has to do any work. It's like the vampire movie. He bit them. And now he can work the, uh, his interests of going around the world and doing whatever he wants to do while his agents of destruction destroy the black family from within. So this is the last thing and I'll wrap this up. I would say it's not that this thing is more important than other things because it's, uh, these other things don't exist. Our economic situation, all of these things exist. However, 
who cares how many businesses your son has if he's a homosexual and won't give you no grandchildren? How much do you care how much education your daughter has if she will not get a black man, not produce a black family, and not produce a future? So if we don't look at this for what it is, it's death, it's, it's the end of the game, and make a decision that we're going to purge. Everybody can't make it. We got to have some standards, and these are just basic. We don't even want nobody dating outside the race. But we definitely not going to let no men go with no men and women with women or people mess with our children in our community. How much integration can the black community bear? No more. It's killing us. And I want to add, based on my brother's statement, freedom is not free. It never was and never will be.